guys, this is me after gardening. I literally just cut off all the, um, the dead leaves and vines from the strawberries from last year. And I'm played out, but I have to like, I'm on my hands and knees to start. And then the stuff I can't reach, I literally lay in my garden across my strawberries. It doesn't kill the plants, even though I'm heavy. Because they're, like I said, they're like foolproof. You don't need a green thumb to do strawberries. It's such a blessing. And I was out there praying and just thanking God for all the plants. They survived the winter. And just asking him to bless each plant that they produce abundantly above and beyond so that we can enjoy it, but we can share as well. But yeah, our strawberry beds, I put a, about this thick of, um, what do you call that? that stuff there that you put in a rabbit's cage like wood chips and it's all natural not treated not sprayed not colored and it it uh I can lay in the garden and I I mean I gotta throw these pants in the wash now but that's all that I get on me instead of dirt so but that was a job I think I was out there for at least an hour and I'm played out the girls were with me too so <sighs> we need water and we need a break and yes, my feet really are that dirty. They really are. And it's from the garden because I have to take off my sandals. Yep. So I need to go shop. All right, guys. So I had to take a break after doing the gardening outside. And I needed to make more doggy muffins for my girls because they're completely out. And these just came out of the oven about five minutes ago. So they're still warm, but they're cooled down enough. So I'm going to put some butter on it for them. They're going to eat and then they're going to go to their room so I can go outside. When I go to the backyard, they come with me. We have a fully fenced in yard, so I don't even have to watch them. They do what they want. But on the side yard, it's not fenced in, so they cannot come with me. Oh, you can still see the steam. So I'm just going to let that butter melt. Paris isn't fussy. She would eat anything, but Coco needs butter on hers. She does. So these muffins are the bomb. They're not just for dogs. I call them doggy muffins because I made up this recipe. I didn't find it online. Nobody gave it to me. I just researched the best ingredients for your dogs to have. And I put them all in a muffin. And once in a while, I'll even treat myself and have... A couple of these. My hubby doesn't like them. There's, they're completely gluten free. They're completely, um, there's no sugar added. Uh, you can add eggs if you want, but all that's in here is real pumpkin puree. There's no other ingredient other than pumpkin. Uh, blackstrap molasses, raw oats, unsweetened applesauce. And coconut cream that's in a can. And all those, oh, and pink salt. And all those ingredients are, oh, and a little sprinkle of cinnamon. They're completely natural. They're healthy. They're, this, these muffins are completely full of fiber. And it helps my dogs. They've been having them for like, I'm thinking over four years now. And they love it. They're so happy to eat their muffins. Let me go put them on the ground and I'll show you. Oh, come here, Coco. Stay there. Stay. Stay. Oh. Stay. Stay. Okay, go ahead. And it smells divine in here because when the muffins were cooking, it just makes our whole home smell amazing. They're going to eat their muffins and be happy. Eat your muffin, Coco. <laughs> What she does, she waits for Paris to eat hers, and then she'll start growling so that Paris knows not to touch Coco's muffin, but they love it. It's healthy. It's good food. I know what my girls are getting, but yeah, these muffins are beautiful, and um, these muffin tins are really, really old, so they're all burnt on the bottom, but I don't care. I don't care at all. So I'm going to take these outside. And show you my second year strawberry garden and I looked and I found my picture of last summer so you guys are gonna see what it started with and where it's at now 
what one year of growth in the strawberry garden did. For anybody who was interested, I'll show the cans. So this is the pure pumpkin, 100% pumpkin, and you always have to check the ingredients. You see the only ingredient here is pumpkin. That's it. This is so healthy. There's so many vitamins, nutrients, and fiber. And what I do for that whole batch of muffins, I use half a can, and I freeze the other half with the other half of the coconut cream. I call it coconut cream. I guess it's coconut milk. I buy this at the dollar store. It's awesome. It's just like a really thick, creamy, coconutty. There's so much healthy fat and nutrients in here. I use half a can of this, half a can of that, and I use two of the unsweetened applesauce. You can get whatever brand you want, but so that gives it its natural sugar. We got fiber, healthy fat, and um, the oats instead of flour. It's awesome. Makes a real good muffin. Harris is having a pee. So I just want to show you guys what's going on here in the garden. This is where I was working today. So yesterday I planted these beautiful chives. They are perennials. They'll come back every single year. And I got these from a good friend of mine who has a garden. This will be our vegetables all in here. But that won't be touched and this area will not be touched. This is uh, also perennial green onions. I don't even know if you guys can see there's one there, some here. They spread. They're called spreading onions or walking onions or something like that. But what a beautiful thing. I know you guys can hear my girls. Pierce, come here. Come here. So all these strawberries on the upper row, this will be their second summer. They're going to fruit this year. Beautiful, big, fat fruit. What I did, I don't know if you guys can see, I was literally laying in my garden. At first I started on my knees. Shh. Okay, get in the house. Stop. Just because you see somebody, stop. I had enough. Go play. Pierce? Anyway, I'm sorry, guys. But what I did is I cut off all the runners and all last year's leaves. So we got all nice, beautiful, healthy leaves there. And these are going to produce fruit that we can eat this summer. Now, from here to there, this row here, it's not ever recommended to ever plant strawberry babies in the fall. I did. And these survived the winter, so what a blessing. So now this summer they're going to fruit. And I'm undecided if I'm going to let it go to fruiting or if I'm going to pluck all the white flowers off and let it really focus on the rooting system. I'm not sure yet because you're supposed to plant strawberries in the summer. But look at how healthy... Look how healthy and green and vibrant and beautiful these are. And you guys see I have tons of, um, what's that called? You know, sawdust and, I mean, the plants, they're healthy, they're thriving. And I also, yesterday, I know you guys can't see it, but all those, that like sandy area, all there, all throughout this, I planted asparagus. So again, asparagus will come back every year. It says it takes three years before you can eat asparagus, but I purchased them. I think they were already a year. They were just bulbs and they looked, no, they weren't even bulbs. They were roots and they looked pretty darn dried out. I soaked them before I planted them. But anyway, we have a groundhog living here in our yard. A real groundhog, guys. He's so fat and cute. But he likes to come in the garden and pull up some things. Last year, he pulled up a couple of my strawberry plants. <laughs> oh, Anyway, this whole section here, I'm going to do new strawberry babies this summer. So, like, I, all the strawberries I have, they're all different years. This is, this here, row up top, that's, this is year number two, summer number two. So they're going to fruit, we can eat it. The three pools there, year number two as well. Now, I didn't get to clean out the pool yet, but you see there's lots of cleanup here that I have to do. i got to cut off all the old leaves. You want to cut those off and throw them out of the way. Any type of weeding, I do that at the same time. Look at this little weed. Get rid of it. And all of these runners, you want to cut them all off. That way, it just allows your new strawberries breathing room and 
it gets all the nutrients to go to the mother plant, you know what I mean? So, this is what it looks like so far. Pretty soon, like shortly, we're going to start digging. We have to dig 19 holes. Oh, yeah. Also, yesterday, I was down here on my knees. This circle, it's probably hard to see on camera, but that's where my flowers are because I want to be able to attract bumblebees and stuff. So, anyway... Anyway, that's good. All right, folks. This looks like a complete mess. There's leaves, there's dead leaves, there's, it's just not organized. So I gotta work on this. I don't know if it's gonna be today or tomorrow, but we're getting rain for like four or five days. So if I don't do it before the rain, it'll be done after the rain. But like there's things, there's some weeds here. If you guys can see, this is a nice big weed here. So all I do is just go in, find the root, and I dig. Look at that. Look at that root. Get rid of that. And there's a leaf grass here. You don't want that in there. You don't want anything that's stealing nutrients and space. Anyway, I didn't get the root on that one. But I'm going to insert a photo now. To show you guys what this looked like last summer because now this summer all of these strawberry plants are year number two so we have this section and this section right here and i have a lot of like i said i got to get all the runners cut get rid of all the dead leaves from last year but even though it looks like a mess now it's going to look healthy and beautiful pretty soon and um even if you're a person, like if you are kind of like me where it's hard to bend and like if you have health issues where you can't, once you plant strawberries, they're tough critters. They can pretty much maintain themselves. It might not look as pretty when you, uh, as when you cut leaves and go through it, but they'll still survive and thrive. Anyway, I'm going to insert a photo here to show you guys what this space looked like at the beginning of last summer when I planted the babies. And you can see how much growth. That's far from being done. But I got about four humongous... Um, what's that called? Weeds. Their roots were like gigantic. And uh, so you know the soil and that's all healthy. But I got a lot of the dead leaves from the fall cleared off. Same with over here. I know it's probably hard for you guys to see. But like all this stuff here can be cut off. The dead leaves can be cut off. I got all my sawdust still here. You just take a rake and lightly, lightly, lightly. I use my hands, but if you're unable to bend, just use your, if you can't bend, use your rake, but use it very lightly. And if you can bend, just do what I'm doing here. I'm just going through lightly through each plant. You see how it's getting the fall leaves out? And it's kind of waking up the strawberries that were sleeping, the, the plants. You just want to get that out of your garden bed as much as you can so that it allows fresh air and sunlight to come in. If at all possible, you don't want to allow those leaves to stay in because that can cause um, disease in your strawberries. See, look at all the leaves. It's fine for the fall and winter, but once spring comes, you want to let sunlight and air flow. So I'll be able to get strawberries this summer from here and from here. But I'm doing a new garden right there, as you guys can see. Pretty nice sized garden. It looks horrible right now, because that's all compost. I have seaweed, coffee grinds, manure, and food compost. That's gonna be transformed into a beautiful strawberry garden. And then I don't wanna make you dizzy, but over here, this whole section is like 10 feet long and about four or five feet wide. But this is gonna be also, you see all the leaves and stuff? And again, I have the same compost seaweed, manure, coffee grinds, vegetables. We're doing all of this as another brand new strawberry garden. And this looks like a tree. It's 
it's actually a bush and it's survived the winter thank you lord and look at this look at the greenery here that's beautiful this is a cherry bush and it can grow up to 15 feet tall apparently but i don't know if we're going to get cherries this summer it says three years but anyway i just want to show you guys the before before it gets to be a strawberry garden we're going to start putting soil there tomorrow all right guys so i need to relax take a break and this is the snack i kind of have like a smorgasbord my sweet dillies with the um, pickled cauliflower some whole grain breton crackers what's that called the imitation crab sticks with mayo and some hard cheddar cheese and of course these girls are waiting oh i'm glad i got that stuff done today it's not perfect the backyard is perfect for me the front yard i need a, to do a lot more work but i think i'm going to get a rake because it it does put a lot of pain on me to be bending even like that so i want to make it as easy as possible for me to be able to upkeep our garden i just want to show you guys coco doesn't like the pickle but paris loves pickles watch this She loves it. Coco likes cheese. <laughs> I love pickles so much and these are amazing pickles.